hello and welcome to another episode of the Monday Book Club. I've had a few weeks off because this book that I'm about to review took a lot of getting through. It shouldn't really have taken that much. It's not a long book, but it's one of those things that sometimes books just drag on. So, let's quickly get into it. It's a review of the latest Ghostbusters film. It's novelization, so let's get straight into it. If there was ever a book that perfectly demonstrated why reading novelizations is a good idea, it's the new Ghostbusters. Nancy Holder, a New York Times best-selling author, clearly has an uphill challenge on her hands to turn an obviously early script into a novel. This book is a brilliant demonstration of how scripts change between being picked up by the studio and getting presented to the viewer on the big screen. The 2016 Ghostbusters remake is one that has polarised audiences, with some loving it and some hating it. For my part, I enjoyed my first viewing, but the film doesn't hold up to repeated watches as well as the original did. It's more on a par with Ghostbusters 2 in that regard, and the novelization fares even worse. The first thing to note is that this novelization is almost 50% longer than the novelization of the original film, yet there's only half an hour difference in the running time between both films, the new one being 30 minutes longer. So where does all that extra material for the novel come from? The answer is, most of this book ended up on either the cutting room floor or not being filmed at all. The first third of the book deals a lot more with the ghost girl backstory of the main character, Dr. Erin Gilbert. This takes the form of numerous chapter-long flashbacks to her time being terrorised by a ghost as a child, or her time investigating ghosts with her childhood friend, Abby Yates. In most cases, this would have formed a story on its own, because there's a lot of mileage in that but here it only serves to grind the flow of the story to a halt. We are halfway through the book before the Ghostbusters put their uniforms on. It's page 170 before a ghost is busted, and that's only the fourth ghost that has been shown in the story, with one of those, the one that terrorised Erin as a child, not even appearing in the film. To say the book is slow is to do it a disservice. This, in my view, is the major flaw in both the novel and the film. When we pick up a Ghostbusters book or watch a Ghostbusters film, it's not to see the story of a group of rejected scientists try to start their own business. We pick it up because we want to see the Ghostbusters busting ghosts, and you simply don't get that here. Most of the story is set around the relationship of Erin and Abby, either showing us their childhood as friends or dealing with their attempts to rebuild that friendship as adults. That's not what Ghostbusters should be about, but it's pretty much all you're going to get here. As a result, the book is slow and dull for most of its length. The few action sequences we get are glossed over quickly as if the author thinks that it's just something we need to get past so that we can return to the relationship drama. It's completely missing the point. The bad guy gets hardly any page time, and when he's there, he's presented as a generic maniac at best or a Saturday morning cartoon at worst. The actual ghost busting is described in sparse detail, so you hardly get a vision of what's going on, and most of the comedy from the film is missing. I realised before reading this book that a lot of the comedy on the screen was ad-libbed by the actresses, but wow, it turns out I didn't give them enough credit. It's not a lot of the comedy, it's the vast majority that they ad-libbed. There's hardly a funny line in this action comedy novelization. All in all, I was severely disappointed by this book. I came into it expecting something good and came away wondering what I'd spent my time on. I don't know if it's because this is the wrong author for the project, having never read any other books by Nancy Holder doesn't really give me anything to make that decision based on, or whether she was just handed a bad script, which is quite likely given the amount of material that was clearly cut from the film. But whatever the reason is, this is a novelization that is only going to be of interest to people who, like me, come into these things to compare them to what they saw on screen. Sadly, the book was a big disappointment. Okay, as you can see, it wasn't a book that I was particularly fond of, but I think it's interesting from a novelization point of view just to see how much was different between what the original film and script would have been for the novelization to be based on and what we actually saw on screen. So from that point of view, it's a great book for demonstrating the differences, but in terms of enjoying it, I'm sorry guys, I just didn't. It just wasn't for me. But anyway, that's something that uh, you take your chance on with art, isn't it? Sometimes it's for you, sometimes it's not. This time, eh, oh well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you did like this. And if you did, remember to click the like button, share it with your friends so that they'll know a good book when they see it. And do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Coke Robinson. You've been watching the Monday Book Club on ZJKR. And I'll see you later.